welcome to Bend the Knee, a Song of Ice and Fire podcast. I am Sir Matt, the Bud Knight, joined once again by Lady Teresa. How are we doing? Doing good. Perfect. And today we are back with Mead, Meat and Cheese, episode two. And today we are making modern apple cakes. Um, so in uh, Feast of Ice and Fire, the cookbook, they have medieval apple cakes, which involve like making dough and frying it. And that was just kind of not what I am up for today. So we are going to do the modern apple cakes, um, which is a cake with apples mixed into it. And then like a crumble, like a coffee cake crumble on top of it. So that's what we're going for. Okay, so the recipe today calls for a half a cup of unsalted butter, a cup of granulated sugar, two eggs, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, two cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda. I don't really know if there's a difference or not, but I mean, apparently there is. Uh, so half a teaspoon of salt, one cup of sour cream, and two to three tart apples peeled, cored, and diced. And then there's a topping that we're gonna be making as well, which calls for three-fourths cup of packed brown sugar, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, two tablespoons of unsalted butter, and a half cup of chopped walnuts. And we have most of these ingredients, but the walnuts, we've got pecans instead, so. I'm sure it's gonna work out fine. We'll, we'll work with it. All right, so we're gonna cream together butter and sugar um, in this uh, Game of Thrones relic KitchenAid thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do not think they had KitchenAids uh, back in that time, but we do, so that's what we're going to be using. Yeah, we are, so my butter was in the freezer, so I had to semi-melt it a little bit just so it wouldn't break the mixer when I aren't KitchenAids pretty much indestructible though no I definitely had it get really angry at me before when I'm like trying to mix three cups of oats into the cookie mix oh it's the ninja blender that's in, indestructible doesn't like that should I put eggs in yet uh yeah why not yeah why not probably supposed to cream the butter and sugar first and I uh I didn't so. Well, there are directions. I suppose I could actually read the directions. You could be helpful, but, but, I, mean, but I mean, whatever. But who's got who's got time for directions? So here we go. We got the kitchen aid going. Is there an vanilla extract? This looks dark and creepy in there, so I can't tell. How old it is? Well, it's not that old. I just don't know if there's enough. That should be fine. to get all your dry ingredients together and then slowly mix them in with your wet ingredients because some baker decided that's the best way to do it just to dirty all the dishes so that's what we will do so, I can't read that far two cups I don't want far in my wine yeah, that would probably not be. We're drinking white wine today. Well, it's just what was open, and, you know, we're not wasteful. Well, I mean, it's also dessert wine. I mean, do you drink white with... I mean, it's a Chardonnay. It's more like... A... It's because I had fish yesterday. That's why. Okay. Those are two cups of flour. And then... Dirty teaspoon here. Is it one of each? One of each. Baking soda, baking powder. We'll mix our exciting dry ingredients here. And then, what about the? So this takes sour cream. So it says. When do you put that in? Whenever you want. Add the dry mixture to the cream mixture and add the sour cream. Okay. 
I say for what all in? Just... Fit. <laughs> um, so I don't, um, I kind of quit buying sour cream for an unknown reason and just started buying plain Greek yogurt because then I don't have to have sour cream and Greek yogurt, I guess. So that's what we're going to use. So we're using Greek yogurt instead of sour cream. Yeah, but I use Greek yogurt for sour cream. So it's like... Are they like, they're like the same thing? To me they are. I mean, it's a little bit more tart and a little bit less fat, I guess, would be the only situation. So we'll just put extra butter in. All right, this is my fancy uh, pampered chef. Um, measuring tool for weird wet ingredients like this or peanut butter or Crisco. So That's another thing you can always add more of. Crisco. <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, gravy. I mean. Definitely gravy. All about that. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. I'm making a mess already. Uh, where'd you put my wine? It's right here. Yeah, can I have that? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, so we're supposed to add the dry to the wet and the sour cream. I don't know. Just toss it in, I guess. You're supposed to add slowly, mainly so you don't make a mess, would probably be the idea of that. So just add it in while you're... Yeah, like, let it mix up, add more in, let it mix up. So, I mean, it'll start to thicken. Yeah. Well, then I'll put in the, um, fake sour cream. Oh. Okay, so um, I didn't cut up the apples yet because I didn't want them to brown and it just said add the apples. Where is it? Stir in the apples. That's all it says. So basically you just peel them, chop them, and just toss Dice them. Them. Yeah, you just toss them in. So I just kind of saved that for the last. That way they wouldn't brown um, while we're getting all this stuff going. So I guess I'll get going on that. I'm using Granny Smith apples because they um, are a firm fur apple and they hold up their shape. So um, some apples are like too soft and they'll just turn into mush um, when you're baking them. So. And some apples are liars. Like, you know, Red Delicious, they are anything but that. So. <laughs> so gross. It's, I mean, whoever. I can't came... believe they sell those at the grocery store and they're not just like force fed to like grade school kids and inmates. Who came up with that name? I mean, that is like the most false adverti advertising that's ever existed. I mean, it just doesn't even taste like an apple. I don't know. Alright, so now we got all of, all of our apples chopped up. And then we're done with the KitchenAid because that would be an example of the KitchenAid getting angry and trying to fall off the table. Okay, so do I go with the spoon yet, or? I don't know, I mean, what is it? I, mean, I guess just butter and sugar. I mean, yeah, you can lick it. Is it good? Again, it tastes good, or? And sour cream. So no, not really. Well, I'm gonna try it. Yeah, and vanilla. You wouldn't like it. <laughs> okay, that looks pretty good. Now we can go to make the crumble. 
All right, so these are fake walnuts. Um, I mean, apples and pecans are perfectly mm, roasted and salted. You're gonna be pretty good. Hey, salt. I'm gonna put salt in. I'm sure there's supposed to be salt in it. How much salt do we need? Hmm. No, don't do that. Well, I know. Why not that one? <laughs> I don't trust you. Well, how much do you need? Just one thing? No, I'll read the recipe. Does it? Is it like a full teaspoon or not? On the back. It's supposed to be in the apple mix. Half teaspoon. Okay. We're going to measure. Or excuse me. Half. Yeah, half teaspoon. Because. That's why the salt out. Jeez. I'm going to put it up to my. Use them all. Jeez, just using all my pecans. Well, there's only gonna be like three left, so you'll be fine. Okay. Oh yeah, let's use this bowl. So we only dirty half the dishes in the house and not all of them. And then brown sugar. Yep. How much brown sugar? Uh, three fourths of a cup. Packed. Really annoying amount. It's got to be packed. It's measure. literally what it says. That just means you smush it in. Cinnamon. Cinnamon is probably like a tisp. A teaspoon. A tisp. Um. All right. Um. And when we need to like cut in the butter. Yeah. What does that mean? What does cut in the butter mean? So if you have like hot butter, it's not gonna work. So you have to have cold butter to cut in the butter, and it's. Just this says two tablespoons, so I was gonna use. So just like you're just cutting the butter, cold butter, just putting it. It's literally what it means. It's literally what it means. Where do I put it? I, think I put it in the fridge. That's in the fridge. Oh yeah, yeah. good idea. Oh yeah, because we are going to use half vanilla bean ghee from Lady Ashley and half yes. butter. Because I don't know <clears throat> the melting properties of ghee versus butter, so we'll just do half and half. I don't know, but it's probably gonna be really good. So. Great. I want to get everything dirty. Yeah, I feel bad because last time I had a whole thing where I was like, hey, she hooked us up and gave us some ghee, and I literally could not find that yeah. footage. We talked about it. We were like, Lady Ashley gave us all this ghee. I know. It's totally awesome. And I, I couldn't find and it. So I gave her a shout out on the podcast, and I will also give her another shout out here. Thank you so much. So we're using um, the vanilla bean one. Yeah, it's probably freaking delicious. This. Which I also put in the fridge for a little bit so it would get firm. I mean, it's you like, could probably just eat it with a spoon. Well, it seems excessive. No, I just want to try it. Well, you can just do that later. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do I, like, mix this up? With the thing right here. The kitchen aid. No, because it'll crush the nuts. Not that. I'm going to get my tool. Well, that's why you have all the tools. That's why you have all the tools. This one's clearly really brand new. Um, it's okay. I think this is like a Goodwill kind of situation. Hey, you can find a lot of good cooking utensils at Goodwill. Well, I don't even know what the new one that these look like. They're probably like silicone or something and just as annoying to try to clean. So yeah. I'll just stick with this. I mean, well, right now you can't go to Goodwill, but when Goodwill's open back up. I know. Um, so, yeah, so you're just going to sprinkle this on top, and I just kind of want it to be well mixed. Like, I don't want one to have, like, a huge chunk of butter on it and one to have zero. I get the chunk of butter one, by the way. Yep. <laughs> don't know about that. Um, 
so if you don't have this cool whiskey tool, um, you could probably use a fork or you could just like chop up the butter or like on the cutting board better. Um, I kind of just like chunked it in there. Um, but if you were to chop it up a little bit like fine or fine, finely or fine, finer, yeah. finer. Um, then it'd be easier. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so then you could you you could just make them because since we're using a muffin pan, like the little paper cupcake type things, if you wanted, or, or muffin things, but we're, we don't have this. So. Uh, we definitely have the paper cupcake things, but they have like Santa Clauses or pumpkins on them. So not entirely so accurate to the season. We're I'm just gonna spray it. It'll be fine. Also said use a giant muffin muffin, <clears throat> a giant muffin tin. If anyone has a giant muffin tin, like comment on the thing. Who yeah. has a giant muffin tin? I don't have a giant muffin Who tin, but I people? do have a giant muffin top. I'm working on it, <laughs> but. Uh, All right, we're gonna make some muffins with an ice cream scoop. <laughs> hey, just we use whatever you got. Uh, you know, a big spoon, a ladle, uh, your hands, I mean... They're supposed to be two-thirds full, which nobody knows what that means, so whatever. Um, not completely, I guess, would be a better way to... Yeah. Um, it's kind of awkward, because the apples are chunky, and I can tell in some scoops I'm getting, like... A lot of apple, and in some scoops... A ton scoops, uh... of apple. Which is Well, fine. I feel like we're going to need to make two batches. That's oh, a lot of freaking baking. God. Well, because I don't think that's... I, I think we're going to have some left over. Well, I have another pan, so... Oh, okay. Well, then I guess we won't. Go to town. I just brought out the, like, old ghetto one. Right. We need a cast iron one. I wouldn't even know what to do with that. And it would get so hot... <laughs> it'd be like super heavy. It would like it'd be super heavy. There's no way they could make like them this close together. Gross. Okay. That one's definitely like three thirds full. <laughs> that is definitely like okay. So then we put well, the we put the we put the topping on too at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you put the topping on. All right. So I should not. That's not like a full another pan, but just make sure to leave some topping for the next batch. Since apparently there's next batch. So yeah, the risk of putting these too full, oh, like that, uh. well, is that there is butter in it, so if it were to like bubble over and burn the bottom of your oven, that would be... It could start a fire. No, it would just be a bummer. It's not going to start a fire. It's going to be a mess. But I mean, theoretically, it is possible you could... You could what start. is it going to burn? Well, I don't know. I'm just saying. It's not, there's nothing to burn. gonna burn off are these muffins light bringer yes what does that mean <laughs> i'll edit that out <laughs> all right so we got some muffins going on so we're just gonna pop them in the oven do you know for how long i think 30 minutes is what it said that's a long time all right um uh, it says bake for 30 minutes or until you can stick a toothpick in it I put them in for 25. Okay, all right, well, now I need to find something to do for 30 minutes. Oh, that'll work. So here's the toothpick trick. Does not look like it would work, and it's definitely clean. We left them in for like an extra 10 minutes because someone may have overfilled the muffin tins. And then remember, and I was like, and it might burn to the bottom of your oven and make a smelly mess. Well, I mean, it smells like burnt sugar, so. It could, it could be, be worse. It could be worse. 
So if you leave the, if you could, it could start a fire. No, won't start a fire. Uh, um, so I'm gonna leave them in there for a little bit to get them to set, set, settle down. Yeah, and then I can take them out and put them on like a wire rack thing. Um, so good thing we have more batter to make some more because <laughs> I'll make them more correctly, I guess. Um, but whatever, they look good. I mean, they're probably I mean, delicious. So. They just look so, like, it looks wet, but it's not. Like, this is pretty, this is definitely cooked. I feel like it would be better even in, like, just like a pan, you know, like, like a... You want to just do that? Pan instead of... I say let's do that. A muffin tin, so... That one's kind of shallow. I don't know if it'll fit all the batter that we have, but something like that. We're just going to let these chill out, and then we'll eat them. All right, so I think this double pork method seems to be the best way to go about this. Um, so I took the rest of the batter that we hadn't shoved in these things, and I put it in like a loaf, like a like a meatloaf pan. Um, so that guy's in the oven right now, so I'll let you know if that seems to be a better medium for this situation. But, I mean, they look really good. I mean, they're ready to eat, or... I mean, yeah, but I think that they'd go really well with some bourbon, so I guess I gotta, I gotta get that, and then we can eat them. All right, we got some apple cakes that look really good and smell really good except for the burnt oven situation which is why you always have foil in the bottom of your oven just plan for problems um so i'm going to cut it in half so you guys can check it out but it's cooked pretty good the apple like held up pretty good so i'm just gonna cut up a chunk here and go for it it's really good Nah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't like it. You don't need to eat any of them. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. It's, like, really... It's, like, really fluffy and... Yeah. Super surprisingly, like, fluffy cake situation. I think it's because of the moist apples um, and crunchy top. Yeah, I would, like, make these more often. But I will say they baked weird. So, they, I don't know. We'll look at our loaf pan version and see if that could be more of like a sliced like coffee cake kind of thing versus being a cupcake which if you were to like serve it to other people it might be more right like i think once easy. it dries out though it'll it will be more like uh it'll be more like a coffee cake right so it's great way to go happy saturday <laughs>